Two. Wait, is it double in size of the of the size of the th- of animal. the original size or of the new size? Of the new size. I think it's each time they just double. They in just size. double, double, double. How does double, anything double. get thirty two thousand seven hundred sixty eight times? They're probably born like that big. Maybe microscopic. They've got to be. But even if, be... even if it was a once a single cell organism, and then by the end of its life, it had thirty two thousand seven hundred sixty eight cells. That makes sense. Have if you ever it's one centimeter across when it's molds for the first time? Then it's thirty two thousand thirty two no meters across. <laughs> <laughs> It can't be. It's got to be tiny. 33 meter crawdad. All right. What is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. It's 2024. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And uh, kicking off this new year, actually, Ellis and Adam are both at the same time on Fired. well-deserved breaks. Just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> they are taking breaks. So we have a new producer in the house today, Mariah, on the board. That's a... She's rubbing her hands together like she's got <laughs> devious plans. She's got too much She's power. learned the board already. I'm ready, but so I don't know if you're ready. A lot of power. A lot of power over there. But uh, yeah, we, we're back to all the tech news, catching up to everything. There was uh, obviously a fun show for the end of last year, but now there's a bunch of news that we got to catch up on a little bit. So we have an update on the Apple Watch ban, the Xiaomi car that got announced, which I have thoughts about uh, some of the announcements. Uh, Samsung Unpacked is also in... It's it's right in front of us. Yeah, it's about it's, to right there. it's about to kick off the year. Like CES and Unpacked, we know it's happening, and we also want to wrap up with uh, some of our favorite tech from last year. Yeah, we got some some individual picks. None of us know each other's picks either. Yeah, we hit it. So there may be some hot takes. I don't know what you guys picked, and possibly some overlap. Possibly that's a good point. Yeah. So we'll get there. Yeah. But before we start, uh, we have to talk about a video that I'm sure we've all watched. Uh, Tom Scott, who we've had on the podcast before, released a video uh, saying, after 10 years, it's time to stop making videos. That's the title of this video. It's more of a retrospective on his last 10 years of not missing a single day of weekly uploads, which I just want to say, that's a lot harder than you think. Insane. Like, it sounds pretty hard, but it's even harder than you think to do every single week and especially the the quality of videos that he gets to do and yeah some of the fun stuff that he produces i think you described that well it is very hard when you think about it and it is still harder than what you think about it yeah he said something in that video that i resonated a lot with which is you you sometimes you get to weeks where you don't really have much and you kind of think you might have to put out filler but you can't uh make worse production quality than you usually do you only you, you only have to go up you only have the ability to go up because the audience is used to better and better stuff. So mm-hmm. he just kept topping himself over and over again for 10 years, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy about Tom Scott? <clears throat> you know that red shirt that he wears? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he only wears that red shirt, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. I have, I went back in his discography and just like saw everything, all of his videos. He's always wearing that red shirt. And that gray hoodie too is like his. Right, and the Maybe it's a little chilly outside. I'll wear the hoodie. The ex- that exact red shirt my grandpa always used to wear and he gave me when he died. And I wore that for like three years like the exact bef- same one. yeah you exact same one. one but it was like before tom scott started making videos it was when i was a kid <laughs> i used it as like a night before shirt. tom scott made it cool yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we were cool I was, a, red shirt. I was a fruit of the loom red shirt hipster <laughs> how do you know that it's the same yeah it's the same i wore that shirt for like three years you just looked at it and you knew i knew <laughs> tom if you're listening thief send me your shirt <laughs> you're done making videos <laughs> give away the shirt But shout out to Tom. If you haven't watched his videos, if you also haven't watched him absolutely destroy the alphabet typing test, which was one (laughs) of the most impressive things. He's still one on our leaderboard, right? By like a full second. Spoiler alert, he he crushed it. Yeah. (laughs) And so you should watch that episode. Yeah. If only to see that. He also still will make videos. He has other channels, and I think he said he will come back to his eventually, but just not keeping that he's taking a break yeah. and not doing the weekly upload stuff yeah anymore. yeah he's gonna st- still make videos he's just not forcing himself to make yeah. videos yeah he has a fun podcast too that i was mm-hmm. on where it's Lateral. sort of like a game show type thing yeah i've listened to it before it's so if cool. you enjoy our game show moments you might enjoy that one too hmm. um i thought it would be fun because he has so many videos and i know we all watch them if we all named our favorite one from him just in case somebody out there doesn't watch him and wants a good idea mm. for one okay yeah. Do you want to go first? Sure. Since Marquez is obviously searching. I'm right now. going on him right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he has a video called This Video Has X Views, but the X updates every time there's a mm-hmm. view, basically. 
which is crazy. Uh, it currently has over 70 million views. <laughs> so if you go on YouTube and search Tom Scott, this video has X views, it'll show up and it'll just be updated with the current view count. Yeah. And it's funny, he, uh, he wrote some code basically that just consistently updates it. And in the video, he's like, this will probably break around like 3 million views or so. And it just never broke. It's just That's still really going, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, so I think, I think that was pretty cool. It was, it was pretty early on into like YouTube giving public features mm -hmm. and being able to do stuff. And, uh, it's cool that YouTube never like saw that and then stopped it from being able to do that. And actually now YouTube does live view counts. So when you're watching a yeah. video, the views literally tick up. Yeah. So, yeah. I didn't like that one. That's definitely been copied since then as well. I've oh, seen totally. multiple ones of like this get this video needs this many of you or like something like that. Uh, that's yeah. like live reacting to it. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's a good one. I have one that I'll always remember because it's just like his videos are awesome because they're these little tiny pieces of information that are fun to like throw out there. He has one called um, I visited Yellowstone's zone of death, which is okay. a very short video. And essentially because of the way the sixth amendment is worded in the U S where if you are, in trial for being accused of a crime, you need an impartial jury of the state and district because Yellowstone is a federal district and one of the only federal districts that crosses state lines. There's this like one mile strip in Idaho where federally it's considered the Yellowstone district and by state it's considered I Idaho and there are no people who live there. So you technically couldn't get a jury to have a trial if you committed a crime there. Hmm. So why doesn't everyone kill everyone i'm man. sure i'm <laughs> sure if it actually went to court it would probably be yeah, yeah. they would find They'd a way to it do out. it but it's very funny because he went there and like i think in the description of the video he's like um a car did drive by and i was very nervous when it happened and he, it's like a six minute video and he was in and out as fast as possible well now i know where to bury a body perfect <laughs> well you have to commit the crime there as well oh I could do that. Well, there's no cops, so I guess uh, you're <laughs> If anyone ever there. invites you there, do not go. <laughs> do not go. <laughs> um, I do have one that I remember. And this was this one's a much older one. It's six years old. But uh, there are a couple of these in the world, but certain roads where when you drive on them, the ridges in the road yes. create oh, yeah. music. I remember this video. And he made yeah, he made a video about uh, one that's in California and how it kind of <laughs> sounds terrible because yeah. if you drive at the wrong speed, it's out of speed it just doesn't yeah it's not it's not it doesn't work very well yeah but it's still cool that it's a thing right i thought that was i fun. feel like that's yeah. cool that it's a thing when you if you drive on that road once if that happens to be the commute <laughs> i mean it'd be fun i don't know is it only on the sides in yeah. the rumble strip or it's it's only on the so. sides right yeah. okay so you have to purposely go off it's an the area road a little to bit decide to do it yeah. okay hmm. cool that's fun do you have one mariah did you know we were gonna Fan favorite is the Tom Scott vape pen clip highlight <laughs> of him choking on the vape pen. I'll send it if you haven't seen it. Choking on You've the never vape seen this? It's, it's so like 15 funny. 15 seconds of, yeah. It's just him coughing. coughing. What's the video again? It doesn't matter what the video is. <laughs> Don't even know. Yeah, that is a thing that, that also happened and was memed relentlessly. Honestly, I also give him a lot of credit for filming most of his videos outside. Yes. Because... That's just a nightmare with like wind and light. Yeah. And the fact that he does most of them outside is a big. And we talked about it on the podcast, but I think he's the best teleprompter reader I've ever seen. It's for real. Like yeah. ever. Yeah. There was a great snippet of the podcast where he talked about that, where he just like got really good at it. Because you always wonder, like, th there's all these videos where he's just standing on a beach and he's just walking towards you on the beach mm -hmm. and he talks for like 20 minutes and you're just like, how? Yeah. How did you do this? And he, he talked about it in a pod, so go watch that. But basically, he writes in the same style that he talks. Yeah. So because he writes everything, he's able to just talk naturally yeah. in a way that feels like he's just talking. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. It's I hard to do. It. It's hard to do. When I write hard. scripts, I definitely like I go back over it and speak them out and then change the words to make it sound more Same. like I'm actually talking. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know Tom Scott, go watch his channel and some heavy show. There's a, a yeah. lot of stuff. When you yeah, publish every shows. week, you just kind of cover this insanely broad swath of topics. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he covers so. it very well. But yeah. All right. So we have an update yet again, yep. <laughs> because this is the Waveform Update podcast. Where things happen and then they change. <laughs> yeah. 
It is an unfortunate truth that we record on Wednesdays and things happen in between Wednesday and Wednesday. So we have an update on the Apple Watch ban. Yeah. Uh, the last time we talked about this was two weeks ago because last week we had pre-recorded the uh, end of the year episode so that we could take a week off for Christmas. But basically, at uh, the last episode where we talked about this, the Apple Watch was about to get banned. Mm -hmm. um, it did. Very temporarily. Uh, they were actually off sale online starting on December 21st, and yeah. they were out of stores starting on December 26th. I heard it was a lot of fun for employees to like go through all of the stores and take them off the shelves and off of the display tables Ugh. and put them back. Yeah. <laughs> and I hadn't thought of it that they have to do that right around Christmas, which is like yeah. hundreds of people buying last minute gifts at the Apple store. So yeah, kudos. Shout out to all the Apple retail employees out fun. there that probably yeah. had a rough week. I hope you're relaxing now. <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> so the update basically is that they actually did take it off sale for a little bit, but then uh, Apple basically made a software update that they think will be able to get around the patent infringement. So they submitted that software update to the International Trade Commission to mm -hmm. see if that was enough to get around. Um, and in the interim period, they are now allowed to sell the Apple Watch again until January 12th, when the ITC decides whether or not that software update was okay. enough. Uh, if it's not, back off sale. They're going to have to change out a hardware piece. It's probably going to take a long time to do that. Mm. Um, Apple probably has a pretty quick supply chain considering it's Apple and a huge amount of their wearables sales as Apple Watch. Yeah. But uh, yep. yeah. Part of me would want to think like, oh, well, they'll just discontinue it till the Series 10. But the Series 10 mm, is definitely time. being made already. Like, yeah. So that's... That's a great point, actually. Yeah, so, it's such yeah, a so that's a very big problem. Yeah. It's a very Tim Cook thing. Like, he's a supply chain guy. This is a very supply chain annoying problem to have yeah. for that company. So they're probably trying to brainstorm way. I mean, I'm sure they've been thinking about this, but now they need to figure out a way to yeah. continue to sell watches until the new watch comes out but not make it like too much of an announcement because you don't want to have an announcement for a new watch that's on sale right before the new new watch is on sale. So yeah. there's there's question marks there. The software update thing would mm -hmm. definitely be the most idealistic thing for them because then yeah. they could just update all the Series 10s that they're making right now. Is and... that do we is that pushed, that software update, or they no. just submitted it? They submitted it to the ITC to see if it's like uh, enough. Massimo still thinks that they need a hardware change, obviously. Do you think they're just disabling the blood oxygen features and like calling it a day? I don't... I don't think they'll do that. So mm -hmm. last time when we did talk about that, I actually got a lot of people. I said I thought blood oxygen was fairly <laughs> irrelevant. And a lot of people told me what they really liked it for. And yeah. apparently sleep apnea and sleeping and how you're breathing when you're sleeping. It mm -hmm. does a good job at, at telling if you have a hard time during that. And it's yeah. helped people diagnose mm -hmm. sleep apnea. So right. That is actually cool and pretty damn common. Yeah, so. we got a lot of comments saying, like, this is actually way more helpful than you guys think, which is yeah. surprising. Um, it's interesting seeing, like, a bunch of people in the real world who are saying it is and then us who's yeah. saying it not. So thank you for letting yeah, us know might if be, it's useful to you. Yeah, there's definitely going to be people that it's useful for. It might be a vocal minority thing where it's it's a small fraction of people, but the people who do find it useful right. really like it, so they're vocal about it. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it, Apple's going to try to keep it in there because that's it's a feature that they've advertised and talked about and yeah. really means a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. I think I've come to my own conclusion that I find it hard to not see just Massimo, that's their name, mm -hmm. getting a big old check soon from Apple. Yeah, they say they've like reached the out to Apple and just offered to have them pay them and that Apple never replied because I think Apple just doesn't want to lose. They got a little bit of leverage now. They have a lot of leverage. That's going to yeah. be a fat them, check if that's what happens. It's yeah. funny because them, you could see why they wouldn't want to do it because if if one company successfully does it and gets a check, then every other company is like, oh, I wonder what we yeah. can get a check for. So they just want to not have it work. But yeah. now that they've let it get this far, Massimo has a ton of leverage. Yeah, because yeah. Massimo took the very long process of getting to this point of having lots of governing bodies agree with them. And yeah, I mean... That's just wild to force Apple to take an Apple Watch off the shelves. Like that is yeah. gigantic. I know there's I never so many lawsuits happened. against Apple and nothing ever happens. Yeah. So yeah. So unfortunately, uh, for you guys, the pause lasts until exactly one week from today, next Friday. So 
next week we probably still won't have an update mm-hmm. unless unless they figure it out before Friday, but I think they're going to figure it out on Friday. So in two weeks, you'll probably yeah. know uh, whether <laughs> or not us. the Apple Watch is still for sale or not. Um, but that's the update for now, and we try to do our best to keep you as up to date as we can. Yeah. <laughs> but time moves. so Moves quick. Moves quick. Faster than we edit. <laughs> moves quick. So we'll keep our eye on it. With that, let's uh let's take it to a quick trivia and ad break. Oh Mariah was ready she for was that on. trivia. Lock around the trigger for that one. All right. All right. CES is right around the corner, oh, no. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's happening. Um the consumer electronics show is known for having some crazy inventions and tech products. But CES is also known for destroying your inbox with PR emails. Yes. Exactly. Which of these products is not a real product that I've received an email about? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. So option A is flappy, an intelligent cat door flap for your door. Definitely real. Um, option B is Willow, a smart wooden swing set that generates electricity for your backyard. That's Dope. Hold it for later. Hold okay. For later. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> option C, Jedzy, which is a medical delivery drone for hospitals. And option D, which is Saber, a smart pepper spray device. Save your thoughts for later. Is, I just want to say Saber CES is the only time where we can do name the fake one mm-hmm. versus name yeah. the real <laughs> yeah. one. Because normally Ellis has to make three fake ones. Yeah. But CES is so wild. That that's what we can do. It's I love it. It's a lot. I have C E S T S D from going to C S T. I get it. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I get it. It works. Yeah. Well, we'll think about those for a little bit. Answers will be at the end as usual. Yeah, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. We got to talk about Unpacked. Samsung Unpacked is coming up, so we already know. CES starts off the year, and I think for a lot of people, that's the bookend for the tech cycle for the entire year. CES at the beginning, end of the year stuff for the end of the year. But as someone who's, I'll call it extremely jaded, uh, (laughs) I've stopped paying as much attention to CES. I kind of still hope we see cool stuff at CES, but I ultimately think there's like a couple diamonds in the rough, but then we we start to get the heavy hitters moving out of CES into their own events. I think trade shows overall are kind of losing interest. Right. Like uh, E3 is not even happening anymore. It's officially dead. MWC is also like kind of quiet yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna watch it, but I think for me, it's becoming the Samsung event at the beginning of the year that bookends the year for mm. me. And so Unpacked, we have an announcement date. It is, well, let me check. I think January 17th. 17th, thank you. Which also, real quick on date, does this feel like it gets pushed a week Oh, earlier and earlier. 100%. When is yeah. it? It's going to be before CES soon I, enough, I feel like. As long as it doesn't move before New Year's, it's fine. <laughs> I, 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 that's what I was going to say, though. At yeah. what point does this not just move till December? It moves forward constantly. It, I think it, they always want to be like one of the first ones out of the gate with the new Snapdragon chipset. Yeah, and that's like right. why they're doing that. Yeah, I looked last year was February 9th, I believe. Yeah. But I, I know it's been in January before. So maybe 2023. Two had it, but yeah, yeah I just yeah. feel like it is creeping closer and closer. No, February. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They just went two weeks sooner this year. <laughs> yeah. Sick. So yep. we're creeping up earlier into the year, but we're basically expecting some of the usual suspects S24, S24 Plus, S24 Ultra. And then there was this announcement or a sort of a teaser that they posted that said yeah. Samsung AI. Mm-hmm. Oh, and boy. I don't love or hate this. Like, I I kind of am looking forward to a lot of interesting AI things in 2024. We've had a lot of them in the past year or two. But uh, Samsung AI, what does that mean? Bixby stuff? Is that that what that is? I mean, that would be interesting. It would be, I think that's a good word. Yeah. Interesting. (laughs) What do you think is interesting that Samsung's doing AI, or do you think Bixby's coming back? Well, I so, think Bixby's dead. I think this is the official death of Bixby. Yeah. Well, it could be a rebranding moment for Bixby. It could be a total revamp for like Bixby is this new multimodal focus of the phones, or it could be some totally new Samsung AI and they just drop the Bixby name and it's just Samsung AI. They That's could thing. be pulling a Mr. Peanut, where how they killed Mr. Peanut <laughs> and Bixby. then they brought Bixby him back. Dies and but they brought back. him back. <laughs> Bigger and better. As a baby Bixby. Interesting. Yeah, baby Groot type stuff. I don't know. I'm I'm curious. I do think the AI thing will be very heavy focus for the entire year. Yeah. This oh, year. Yeah. Samsung so. and Google have been like weirdly tight knit and close for the last like three years too. So like 
apparently assistant on like bard with the google assistant with bard is launching fairly soon there's mm -hmm. there was a bunch of rumors mm -hmm. that were going out this week about it launching in the like the next couple weeks or months so maybe they like launch it on a galaxy device oh int yeah I mean, that'd be cool. but they're calling it Samsung AI. Yes, I think I Galaxy AI. AI is what they called it. Galaxy AI. Oh. Yeah. I think that's what it's called in the teaser. Yeah. Always... So I would. Yeah, Galaxy AI is coming. I really don't bad. know what that means. Please don't that's what that. I think. It's that's why I think Bixby's gone. I think this is the new name. Let's rank this from worst possibilities to best possibilities. Worst possibility is it's a slight bump to Bixby as it already exists, and it's annoyingly bad. No, there's a worse possibility. But go ahead. Okay. <laughs> There's That's a so button ominous. on the phone. Um, but I think optimistically, Galaxy AI is a giant focus on software features that have AI behind them, powering them on the phones, and that can uniquely differentiate some of the things on this phone from other phones that come out. Do you have, Maybe. Do you, do you have ideas? In my eyes, worst case scenario is we never get the Bixby speaker because now Bixby is dead. Still had hopes for it. Oh, the Galaxy Home. <laughs> Technically, it was Samsung called the Galaxy, Galaxy Home. Yeah, the Galaxy yeah. Home AI now. Yeah. But um, I think I think Bixby's gone completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and wait, that, that's bad news. <laughs> is it the best case for scenario? The memes, or the worst yes. Case scenario? Okay. For the the user experience, probably best case. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now yeah, what is your scenario? okay? So my my best case scenario is that they just low-key integrate thing like transformer models into everything like apple the only the only times they've ever really mentioned ai is when they say like Auto transformer is now uh are powering the keyboard i would love if like if samsung oh, yeah. keyboard got updated with like a transformer architecture in the background if it was like low-key stuff that would be great we but know it's not going to be low-key stuff <laughs> announcement suggests not low-key yeah. yeah my worst case scenario okay. is that they're going to have like an on-device uh image generator and mm -hmm. you know how they have the uh samsung like me emojis what do mm -hmm. they call it yeah there's a name for there's it. There's too many. There's, it's either an emoji or, or bit mo, me emoji. Oh, there's too many. Yeah. They're yeah. probably going to like have some sort of AI <sighs> me emoji thing. Just says emoji. But my my best guess is that they're going to have some random like image AI image generator for some reason. Because uh, Qualcomm has been like consistently like putting out tests of how quickly they can make an image on device. Right. Like this is. This is going to be a lot of the features of the phone will be dependent on what Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 focuses on. Yeah. So I assume if we already had the the Snapdragon Summit already, yeah. they've talked about okay, yes, the the main chips, the main processors are more powerful, it's more efficient, yes, but now we have all these new cores and capabilities for on-device AI stuff. Yeah. So now it's up to every OEM to take advantage of those to differentiate their phone. Ooh, okay, we're Samsung, we're going to have some crazy on-device image generation or some large language model that does cool stuff with keyboards something yeah. like that they'll They're probably have like a wallpaper generator yeah yeah, yeah. that's i think that's kind of which cool. is fine it's cool it's flashy for the presentation the thing that would be not flashy that i wish they would do and maybe other phones did it, and i feel like we talked about this with like an amazon fire stick or something but just like a chat bot that helps you with just like settings and things that are going on with your phone like the setting search tab is kind of a pain in the ass sometimes when yeah. you don't name something exactly what it right. is. But like context if, aware. Yeah, if it was context aware and could help you actually change settings and stuff on your phone, especially for people who don't know about phones very much, it would help way more than a Verizon store because a lot of those people <laughs> have no idea what they're talking about. True. Um, and it would help all of us from when our um, family calls us to help with <laughs> their phone, which is very hard to do when they're talking on that phone and yeah. you have to teach them how to do something. Oh, good point, yeah. So like, I would love for just to open the settings tab and be like, why are my pictures blurry or what is this? But yeah, it'll probably be flashy stuff like camera, cam photo editing maybe. I think yeah. wallpapers oh, is a uh, very- Photo good. editing. Photo editing like I think is like the most like obvious- like Magic eraser mm -hmm. or something. Or yeah. Generative fill. I don't even know what Google calls all of this stuff. Yeah, generative fill or like magic. moving stuff around magic. Magic mm -hmm. editor, magic eraser, magic, magic, magic. Magic, magic. They'll call it yeah. Samsung AI magic. Yeah. <laughs> I think worst case scenario would be if Samsung created a clippy like creature that was Bixby that that's was just chilling case. in the bottom of your phone all that's the time. Best case that's, best, that's best case. <laughs> that's game changer. Yeah. 
Yeah. I want a little emoji. Guy. A little. What would know. Bixby look like? Clippy. 100%. I don't really want to. Bixby is like the one that would look like Clippy. I'm. I'm going like greenish with a clown nose. I, like if the Pillsbury <laughs> Doughboy was green and an alien. That's my. Are you gonna ask? I'm gonna <laughs> ask ChatGPT like, to make a photo of Clippy. Of okay. Clippy or of Bixby? Oh, sorry, yeah. Bixby. Okay. While you're on that, there were uh, some, some of- very minor leaks of possible S24 features. Yeah. One of them was just a straight up ad that was on like a like a counter in some retail <laughs> store <laughs> that looked like it was the S24 Ultra, and it looks basically just like the S23 Ultra, but silver. Maybe a titanium rail. Yeah, so from the back, it looks exactly the same as the S23 Ultra. Mm-hmm. There is a rumor that it might have a f- totally flat front. Which I'd be happy about. I think that would be awesome. Because they've been getting front slightly screen. more flat mm-hmm. every year. They had like peeled over the edges for S21 Ultra, and then they mostly flattened it for S22 and yeah. S23. Yeah. And they could go, the only phone that's really actually fully flat is the iPhone right now. Like they, they just go straight 90 degrees on the corners. I'd be into uh, flat phones. The um, Do you remember that? S tw- or the Note twenty, the regular one, that was flat, right? Note twenty. Remember, there's two versions, Uh-oh. and the Note twenty was like everyone loved the form factor yeah. and everything, except that the specs were way the worse. The Note twenty was the plastic one, right? I think so. It was the cheaper no, the, version yeah, of the, the two. Plastic. <laughs> plastic. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. I think. Oh no, maybe that wasn't totally flat. The wow, Note twenty five bezel. The Ultra had the curves. I'm surprised I did that. The Ultra had curves. Sh- curve for sure. I yeah. just remember everyone liking the size and the form factor of the Note 20, but it, the specs were so much worse right. compared to the Note. And when you buy a Note, you kind of want that. But um, yeah. I don't know. I think totally flat. That's the funny. other rumor, though, I do like about the S24 and S24 Plus versions are supposedly they're flattening the edges, kind of like the um, iPhone 11 to iPhone 12, where we had rounded edges versus flat edges mm. on mm. the side of it, the rails. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. I honestly... I love my Zen phone. The ultra wide camera has left some to be desired. Pretty soft, yeah. And I want a case for it. And just there's not a lot of case options. S24 there regular for size. There's going to be way more accessories. Yeah. An extra triple camera. Ugh. I might go to the S24. I would throw I try Mini Joe S on that, though. I hate Samsung. We'll see scan. what happens. It's been a long time yeah, since I, I've used I hate Samsung what you scan, I do. But, Every time um, I daily a Samsung phone, I do have to spend extra time making it usable software wise yeah. just for my own taste yeah i think i use nova launcher on my note 8 at least is that um, still around yeah. i don't i don't know weirdly enough though Probably. i apparently never took it out of the app drawer on my phone oh. and it's kept moving and i just <laughs> recently took it off my zen phone because it's moved to so many oh, phones since yeah. then no, like i've never up. opened it but it's just been sitting yeah. there and you can launch it from that icon and i'll jump into the launcher <laughs> yeah i never i never opened it again so i just yeah. recently got rid of it Maybe I'll have to bring it back if I go that's 24 route, but Weird. All I'm right. kind of excited, low-key. Yeah, well, we got some car stuff to talk about, too. Can I even call this a car, or is this just... It's a. It's totally a car. It's a car. Just made by a phone slash everything else company. You could also call it Vapor, but let's call it a car for now. Let's a- try it. Okay. So, they, Xiaomi. They actually have one, though. There's one that's... Well, you can make made. one. Everyone yeah. can make one. Yeah, yeah, Sony yeah. made a car. Yeah. Once. Yeah. So, okay, <laughs> Xiaomi announced the SU7 EV, their first car. It is fully electric. It has all kinds of inspiration from the Porsche Taycan. I mean, if you see photos of this thing, yeah, 75% of it looks like a Porsche Taycan, yeah. and there's some some slight adaptations for things like headlights and, and handles, but it... It looks pretty good. That's the one car it looks the most like, which is a good-looking car. Yeah. But if, if you read that name, though, the SU7 EV... Yeah, it basically has SUV in the title, I and I'm and immediately SUV. thinking SUV. It's yeah. not an SUV. <laughs> yeah, it's very much a sedan. It looks good. It looks really good. Uh, so yeah, I think the I highlight don't... of it is the design. I'm going to read the specs, but I'm going to careful. Well, I think the highlights the specs. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is I'm going to be careful to say that I don't believe that most of these specs will actually happen. So it is a highlight that they're trying this, but I I'll read the specs. Let me just let me know what you think. Okay. Up to 35,000 RPM motor, 668 horsepower, uh, up to 800 kilometers of range. In the so standard. that's about 500, 500 miles of range. But wait. But also <laughs> a long range version that will ship later with 
1,200 kilometers of range, 750 miles of range. Cool. I wish. Dude. Okay. I'll That's keep crazy. going. 800 volt architecture, so it can charge 137 miles in five minutes, or you can add 317 miles in 15 minutes of charging. Not sure what charger. Uh, Hyper OS, so they have the software that matches the Xiaomi smartphones and then all the design stuff that I'm sure you're seeing in the video version of this podcast. Do we think this car achieves a single one of these specs? I think all of these, or well, not all of them. Two of them are very closely connected, and I don't think the charging is as absurd if you can believe the range, because 317 miles in 15 <laughs> minutes is a percentage of the battery in peak charging. So if yeah. the battery is actually 750 miles, Oh, right. That seems totally plausible. But that would still imply you need to charge because we don't have a do we have a kilowatt hour size of the battery that they're promising? I think they did have one. I yeah, think it was like only like 113. It was not even that big. Oh, let me see if they. OK, so maybe I'm wrong there. But when I first see, yes, 15 minutes, 317 miles sounds crazy. But to a battery that's so big. If you can keep peak charging for longer, because logically that checks yeah. out. They, this is only a seventy three point six for the standard and oh one hundred and one for the long range. So the same size as a Tesla Model Three, really? Tesla Model S, yeah. The seventy three or the seventy three is a Tesla Model Three, more or less. So how is hundred? There are cars out there. Miles of range. Yeah, there are cars out there with a hundred <laughs> kilowatt hour battery packs. Yeah, Model right? S. The Model S, and what's the range on that? 407 On miles. a good day, 350. To, I think they claim the long range can go about 400. Yeah. Okay, so this one's claiming They're claiming double, 750. Much. Yeah, that's insane. 750. Like, I, at least <laughs> if they claimed like a reasonable range, I might think that this car might exist. But because they went straight to 700 miles of range, yeah. I now don't think this car will ever exist. Yeah. That's, I didn't realize the battery pack comparison of it. I thought they were just kind of going crazy. Is Xiaomi's test track just 700 miles of downhill? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually gaining battery the entire it's time. It's just a wild yeah. claim. It's supposed uh, to have a self-driving. There was a video out there that showed it parking in a parking structure where it just like goes around in circles a bunch and then it like it almost hits a car but then it backs up and the other car goes around it and then it it parks in the most like inconvenient parking space that's possible. the most believable thing about the car yeah the yeah. fact that it will go park itself in a garage yeah you know they say it might be 2024 when this comes out we're, we're living in we're the year in. 2024 i don't i mean i have to take it somewhat seriously because it's xiaomi and they yeah. are really announcing it and this isn't CES. Like this That's is an announcement point. of a car by itself. Yeah. If it, by the way, if you see a new car announced at CES, I'm just gonna tell you to confidently assume that that car is never coming out. Don't. Yeah. Don't assume that you right. will ever be able to buy that car. If they had announced um, this at CES, we'd be like, it's definitely not. Yeah, coming that would out. be confirmation. That's all the <laughs> yeah. confirmation I need that this car is never coming out because yeah. it's its own event outside of CES. I have to go. All right. Well. Yeah. I guess it's Xiaomi doing a thing. Yeah. Oh, but, I was just looking at old photos and i saw what, what was it called the nissan mx i or something from oh, 2020 yeah yeah it's a cool looking car but it's super concepty and yeah when you go to ces and the seats are like lighting up and there's no steering wheel <laughs> in, enjoy <laughs> the 10 seconds what it's, yeah it's, it's, gonna be good. it's like 75 percent of the cars there was a bmw once that we sat in and it was so prototypey that when my cars tried to scoot through the back seat they were like wait 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 can you step out and come to the other side of the door the middle of that seat is cardboard yeah it just it'll collapse <laughs> it'll over collapse you. yeah okay. so like if this was just a random ev startup that announced these i'd be like it's definitely not coming zero out. that would be zero percent but xiaomi makes like everything mm -hmm. which is why it's just above zero but they actually make every yeah i mean yeah just above zero because yeah. if you if you ask me what company on planet earth has the best opportunity to show up out of nowhere and ship an ev with 750 miles of range on a 100 kilowatt hour battery yeah. xiaomi would be nowhere near the top of the list i would think okay who has the best most advanced battery tech and drive trains and efficiency we're talking about lucid tesla the absolute the the top stuff in, yeah. in ev world and Xiaomi's never shipped a car. So, I mean, they're they're confidently putting models of this car in Xiaomi stores, which is easy to do. You can put a model car in a store. That's super, super simple. But I just don't believe that it will actually have those specs. It is interesting, though, like David was saying, that 
j- the fact that it's Xiaomi and it's a big company and announcing this has way more risk for a large company that yeah. already has other products they have to worry about. Yeah. Like if yeah. you just told me these an EV's coming out with these specs, I'd be like, all right, it's a pickup truck from a company I've never heard of that with will a also three hundred kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, <laughs> and of and the first thing on the website is a uh, reserve your pay us three hundred dollars to reserve <laughs> yeah. your place in line <laughs> with right a now. Buy some stock button <laughs> yeah. next to it. Yeah. yeah. Um but the fact that a Xiaomi does change this and like you said a bit more hopeful i think i'm a tad more hopeful than yeah. you i don't see it hitting those specs that's a lot like 750 miles out of nowhere but i trust xiaomi doing it more than the like random startup getting billions of dollars from yeah. investment funds like yeah coming okay. out of nowhere so if you had to assign a percent chance you think of this car actually delivering with let's say 500 miles <laughs> yeah, yeah let's say the standard version the 500 yeah. mile version what percent chance do you give this exact car does it have to be 2024 or just percent chance it comes out because that it comes out in, t- in the next two years because this is china they mm-hmm. de- they they develop battery tech very quickly. They do. They They're, ship the craziest, fastest charging phones ever. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So is that what's going to happen? Are we just going to get mind blowingly fast charging? But you can't like, get it Xiaomi in the United cars? States. And they're not using. They're definitely not using NACS. Hmm. Right. I give this fifteen percent chance. Fifteen. That's actually yeah. more than I thought. I'm you were being generous. Say. That's the same percent um, of Andrew's diet. <laughs> Think about it. Makes I, you think. So fifteen percent that it hits five hundred miles in the next range. two years. Yeah, next two years. Fifteen percent of my diet is Cholula. Yes. Well played. But I've been studying that board. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. Like they haven't given a price or release date yet, right? They I said twenty twenty four. I think this is regardless of price. They could have said sixty grand. I they could agree. have said six hundred grand. I still don't think you can give a yeah. seventy three kilowatt hour battery five hundred dollars yeah, range. I don't think EV companies have. Sh- straight away from being extremely expensive and still aren't hitting these numbers. Yeah. So Xiaomi, I don't think price has to do with it. They also haven't said where they're going to sell it, which is sad. They probably won't sell it in the U.S. Probably not. Yeah, possibly not. E- either way, unless we're missing some really long-range electric vehicle, I- I'm going to go 25% and say I'm being optimistic about it. I'm going to say 30 yeah, price is right. Price rules. is right. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys some context. Um, the most efficient Lucid, just from me it's Googling it, the entry-level Lucid Air Pure has a f- claimed 406-mile range on an 88-kilowatt-hour battery. Mm. And the EV everyone keeps telling me to check out, which has solar panels on it, has three wheels, and I also don't think we'll ever ship, but they talk about it a lot, is the Aptera EV. Oh, they claim up to a thousand miles on a single charge. That's that and it like looks like this. Yeah, it's that. Oh yeah, street. I guess it could be street. <laughs> Is that the one that there's all those other things that has like solar power? Yeah, that's good. it's got some solar power. Okay, I'll but for, if you're not av- aware of what it is yet, yeah, it has three wheels. It's like. Uh, it, it doesn't look like, look like a car. It looks like it's yeah. supposed. It looks like Tricycle. a science project that's supposed to yeah. hit a thousand miles. It looks like a car that would be in that the future if image. It yeah. looks like a car you would Society buy and then learn that the Hummer EV Society. and the Cybertruck are on the roads and be like, I'm never driving this on the roads. Yeah, <laughs> never <laughs> driving again. <laughs> yeah. It has a hundred mile an hour top speed. The Aptera has a claimed four hundred miles of range on the forty kilowatt hour battery and a thousand mile range. How on much does 100. it weigh though? That thing's got to be. 80 percent battery weight yeah yeah probably. it also has solar panels so like yeah i guess but solar panels even on the smallest version of that are adding not about not all single i think digit miles every single company that's put solar panels on has even in their most optimistic market said like at best this is controlling your like air conditioning for the day <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. Prius Prime that I tested Four miles. when I left it parked Something outside like for several several days gained several miles <laughs> of range. Nice. So yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do with it what you may. It's Xiaomi. They announce crazy stuff. Sometimes. I just want it looks really good. It does. We probably won't be able to buy it in the U.S., but I would own this personally. Wow. Without yeah. even testing that, it probably doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or anything like that. It definitely has Android Auto. Oh, it probably has yeah, Android it definitely Auto. has yeah, yeah. Xiaomi. But not CarPlay. Okay. Probably not CarPlay. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. That's bold. I, you would own it. I would own this for sure. 
How, what's the <laughs> well, okay? One more question for shizzle. Maximum price you would pay to own it that I would pay. Yeah, Ugh, I wouldn't pay a lot for a car. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> yeah, but it's Xiaomi, so like. Mate, I would say they're gonna try to sell this for. Like, Let's assume all the specs are true. Fifty-five thousand MSRP. That'd be crazy. Those spe- that would be like best bang for your buck. That'd be unreal <laughs> if it hit these numbers. I think that's what they're gonna try to sell it for. The four hundred mile base Lucid is about eighty grand. Yep. So, but it's Xiaomi. It is Xiaomi. And they basically, if you go on their website and look at all their products, they're literal direct ripoffs of other really expensive products. Oh, they're not they're shy cheaper. about that. No. Yeah. Their vacuum cleaner looks exactly like the Dyson vacuum mm-hmm. cleaner. Like, all of their stuff is pretty much exactly a ripoff. We shall see. But it's way cheaper. So, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Speaking of EV news. Oh, I saw this. Uh, <laughs> basically, at the very end of last year, Porsche and Aston Martin announced this new CarPlay that Apple had originally announced at WWDC 2022, which is a long time ago. It was a very weird, very am I in a huge state. I have so many thoughts. Portion of WWDC where Apple was just like, in the future, all yeah. of the cars are going to be completely controlled by your iPhone. Mm-hmm. All of the screens are going to have all this information. And it was all a bunch of mock-ups, and they didn't announce anything real, and then we didn't hear anything for, like, an entire year, but... Just moved on. They had announced that by the end of 2023, they would be able to have announcements about it actually coming true, and literally at the very, very (laughs) end of 2023, they put out a little press release with uh, Porsche and Aston Martin talking about this next generation of CarPlay. Didn't they also say that... 80% 80% of people wouldn't buy a new car unless it had CarPlay. That's That might have been another Apple quote, yeah. That's I'm pretty sure they said stat. it was a wild and stat clearly that not I true do not believe is The true. Model Y does not have CarPlay, and it's the most popular yeah, car they, in the world. They like they only uh, asked people in Cupertino <laughs> yeah. just looking to buy a new car. Yeah, they, they went around on the Apple campus, and they were like, hey, <laughs> I, need a, I need a little survey here. I need a quote. It's like when you're in high school, and you have to do a survey for a class, so you ask like 14 people, and they're like, my data. In my case. data. <laughs> you just ask your friends. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I think, yes, CarPlay, if we just stick with CarPlay, is an important feature for a lot of people in cars. Why? Because most in-car software sucks. Like, yeah. real bad. Yeah. Horrible. CarPlay, not that great, but better than car software. So very, very bad. This mock-up of it, like, taking over your whole car would seem to make sense because, again, what car is going to have better software than what Apple can make, right? Everyone just wants their phone anyway, so, like, why not just give people their car just being their whole phone? And Apple doesn't make a car yet, so I guess this is the Apple car, you know? Uh, the press announcement showed, they said Porsche and Aston Martin. Porsche didn't really give any model numbers, Aston Martin did say that next year's DB12 would have this full CarPlay thing on the screens, which if you look up photos of the interior of the Aston Martin DB12, the 2024 DB12, there are physical buttons for lots of the same things that show up on the screen. Like your your air conditioning and your media, like your volume, all of that, there, there are knobs and buttons on the car already. So they'll have a physical button and a digital button. How is that... A good idea. How is that a useful, like, how is that a good use of space? It's going to be very redundant. Asking. Yeah. yeah. It seems weird yeah. to me. So I don't, I, I want to throw I, in there, I'm yeah. pro physical buttons. Me too. All in a car, I not think, all, but climate control, easily accessible physical buttons. Yes. Pretty much pro. everything. I think you could probably get a, there's not a lot of things almost every human agrees on. But I think one of them is that physical buttons for things like that are better than digital buttons in a car. Yeah. In, a, in a car, for sure, when you, you should be keeping your eyes on the road yes. and you want to reach and have real haptic feedback about what like you're moving and adjusting, physical Facts. buttons are better. So this CarPlay taking over your whole screen, your whole dashboard, maybe there's a secondary screen in your car. I don't think every car of the future is gonna have to have all screen. I think that's an aesthetic that got popular because Tesla got popular with EVs. And part of making an EV affordable is cost cutting around the expensive battery. So Model S and Model 3, they have incredible batteries and drivetrains, but then they've cost cut everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Take away the screen, take away the buttons, take away everything, it's super minimal. And so because Tesla's are so popular, all these other car manufacturers are going, oh, 
this is this is getting popular maybe we do that too and so you're seeing all these super minimal interiors come out but that's not actually what's popular about the car i think people are buying the ev for the ev reason and are dealing with and are okay with the whole screen thing but i think we all still know that physical buttons yeah. are better than digital buttons so this weird like head fake that we're doing towards all car play on your car but also in cars that have regular buttons is kind of weird because i think we're in a couple years going to realize we, we're just going to have regular cars with buttons again so it's it's weird well you still need your car to work if you don't have an iphone right so it's like i feel like yeah. that's why they're doing all the physical buttons in conjunction because even though they're going to have the digital button option with all the mm. car play stuff mm. you still need to be able to control your car if Either you don't have an iPhone or if you don't want to plug your iPhone in. Yeah, I guess. So if it's still the next gen CarPlay, this is still a projection from your phone. Like this isn't built into the car like Android Automotive. But it's a well, no, this next generation CarPlay is supposed to have access to all of your car's features. So you're supposed to be able to like control right. the temperature. So it'll show your speedometer and your range and your RPMs if it's a gas car. Yeah. But it, you still need your iPhone um, for that to work. For the CarPlay to work, yeah. So if you don't have your iPhone, if your believe, iPhone is dead, it's oh. still going to back up to whatever Aston okay. Martin software is underneath it. That's actually a good point. I had not thought about if that's the case. Because I'm not sure. I, I assume it needs your iPhone, but it could be... Not sure, yeah. Like yeah. Android CarPlay needs your iPhone. Will this next gen CarPlay be built into the car like Android Automotive, or will it still be like CarPlay and God? That's you? actually an interesting question. That's if a great you question. have Android Automotive but an iPhone, can you still connect and do basic th like you can connect your iPhone to the to just Pulsar do like 2. music and stuff like yep. that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I guess it, if it's built in, it's the best case scenario because then even if you don't have an iPhone, you can at least do the minimal things like contacts and whatever, and then just it's an yeah. Apple UI for the rest of your car. Your phone will be like your car will be like another device in your Apple account, basically. Yeah. yeah. When I first thought about like adjusting climates and everything like that in CarPlay, I was like, well, I'll just use my knobs for that and CarPlay for everything else. But like a lot of these pictures that they're showing of like renders of it are showing climate controls and everything like that so they do want that in there mm -hmm. and it is both the way i see it is like i'm just going to use my knobs for the stuff i want to use and then hopefully just customize the screen enough to i'm never going to touch my heated seat button on the screen never going to touch my climate control on the screen it's going to have my maps it's going to have my music and you know what this all my comes... cool skin on my i fully i would i would do exactly what you're doing yeah. but then yeah, it, it comes down to, again, the, the question that we've asked many times on this podcast before. What do you think will happen first? A car company deciding to spend the money on software and become a good software company as well so that they don't have to rely on Apple putting all of their stuff on the car screen or a tech company becoming a good car company. So something like Tesla Shall <laughs> or Xiaomi yeah. or Apple or whatever, yeah. who's already really good at software, getting really good at the car part, you know, panel gaps, build quality materials. We talk about all that all the time. Which do you think will happen first? Yeah, you know, so theoretically, yeah. <laughs> for becoming a car company should be much harder than uh, hiring a good software team. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday. Like, for some reason, these traditional auto manufacturers just like don't want to hire a software division to maintain good software in their a cars. really good so they have software divisions, but they're yeah. not a focus that's yeah, like not pushing not a software pushing company. boundaries. Yeah, yeah, right. And I think they don't want to do that because people currently aren't buying cars for the software. People are currently like if you're buying an expensive car like a Porsche, they're buying it because it's a Porsche. Or if they're buying a Honda Civic, they're buying it because it's a Honda Civic. But I don't think right now software is like a major reason that people buy cars. And yeah. so that's why they're so likely to just be like, oh, Android Auto or uh, CarPlay, just like off the shelf, put it in. We don't even have to hire a software team. Yeah. But slowly these these startups like Rivian are coming and like devoting these really big software teams to the interior software of the car. And that is a major selling point for people that are the early adopters of EVs. But as EVs become normal cars by 2030 when it's illegal to buy a nice car in the United States, mm. like what is that going to look like? Yeah. So people up until let's say 2020 didn't really think too hard about the software built into the car it's just whatever i'll get car play and that'll be fine yeah but people buying new cars in 2024 and beyond 
are going to start to care about the software because a lot of them will be EVs and the software will matter. Yeah. And a lot of them are younger people who care about the software, let's right. be honest. So it almost feels like Tesla's success kind of tricked a lot of the car industry into some of the wrong focuses. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. I do think a fully compatible like Android Auto or CarPlay car in an ideal world is the best option because those two software manufacturers are so much better than even the software software car companies currently. are currently. Yeah. And I think they have such a head start. I don't see Tesla or Rivian ever catching up to them in the software function. Plus, yeah. if we always talk about Tesla and the ecosystem of charging and being inside your Tesla all the time, mm -hmm. what's a better ecosystem than your car being connected to your actual ecosystem yeah. of your phone and your like it's, all your smart stuff. Yeah, it almost feels like the only possible way to get that ecosystem integration is for it to be the CarPlay mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Like if you use, like if I use Tesla as an example, their app on the phone is phenomenal. It's the best I've ever used for any car. You can do, you can send instructions to the car, you can preheat the car, you can have schedules for charging. You, there's all sorts of things Schedule that plug into it. Yeah. And And by the way, and this is, separate from the car like if you have a tesla solar roof system there's all the software that talks to the car where i literally have it where if my car is plugged in while it's sunny outside it will only use the excess energy from the solar that the, the house isn't using to charge the car insane i couldn't even dream of doing that with i don't think the Taycan has anywhere near that functionality so the integration in tesla's ecosystem is great but if you still want the texts from your phone or the apps on your phone, you kind of need CarPlay. I think there's a specific phrase you used in there that's so important and really important for a lot of people saying like Rivian and Tesla already have really good software, which is it is the best I've used in any car. Mm -hmm. Any the best car software right now from Tesla and Rivian and whoever is like still worse than an iPad. C level like <laughs> yeah. like actual tablets and, yeah. and UI and software from these big companies. That's, yeah. that's so, my favorite part about watching some car reviews is someone will go, oh yeah, the, the, the in-car infotainment's really good and they'll swipe across and it'll be like this horrible janky animation. I'm like, 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 if the, I reviewed an iPad and did that, you'd be like, what is wrong with this <laughs> yeah, thing? This yeah. is horrible. I just like, anytime you think car software is really good, imagine that, yeah, being on an iPad or in a phone review that yeah. we were doing right now and people would be like, you thought that was a good <laughs> Are you phone? serious? Or you can't be kidding. Yeah. An, an interesting angle of this is that the, with the new CarPlay is that depending on the manufacturer, they're going to skin CarPlay to be based around the manufacturer's I think car. That's cool. I want to customize my, I sorry. think it's Well, I think it's important. I think it's important yes. for, especially for the car manufacturers, right? They don't really want you to get into a Porsche and then everything around you is Apple UI, right? Like colorful, like yeah. everyone else's, yeah. It makes a lot more sense for you to get into the Porsche and everything is sort of Porsche themed, but still has all your phone functionality. And as a car manufacturer, like I think a big reason that there's sort of this tension where they don't want to give all the power to Apple is that they don't want to just be like, oh yeah, half of your experience is dictated by not us. Yeah, so the fact fair. that they themselves can skin it and make it feel like it's a first, it, it's going to feel more first party, even though it's a third party thing. Yeah. That's why I think this, this CarPlay thing, ha it has to be a stopgap between the car companies eventually going, all right, we got to get good at software <laughs> yeah. and we're not good at it now. So you know what, if we can work with Apple and they can deliver a great experience, we can keep selling cars to these new people who care about this software experience. Yeah. But we're eventually, we can't just give it up. Yeah. So I think this is a stopgap. Once EVs get a lot more popular and prevalent and there's cheaper ones like the Tesla Model 2 or like a Rivian R R2, mm -hmm. is that what mm -hmm. it's called, R2? The platform, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Then I think that it's going to be a much more major thing that traditional automakers like Honda or Toyota actually have to consider because yeah. people that are going to be buying the most cars are going to be like millennials and Gen Z. Yeah. So that's the reason why I think Google and Apple will prevail because they're going to see more companies going towards their own software and they're going to be like, hold on a minute. We want to be in these cars. This is, mm -hmm. this is our opportunity to make more money or our opportunity. We're possibly losing money because yeah. now people aren't using CarPlay or Android Auto. They want data as much as possible. If you start taking away <laughs> driving data from them, you start running into some issues. I wouldn't doubt if they're going to start 
I mean, like they're going to want to make deals with car companies and be the thing inside of cars. As much as they can. But yeah. it's, it's an easy selling point. Hey, why pay a software team? Yeah. Just pay us or we'll pay you to be inside <laughs> this car. Well, here's a question for you guys. Would you prefer a really good like Rivian or Tesla UI that's just really good? Or would you prefer CarPlayer or Android Auto? That's... I think the like, I think there's an obvious answer there. Really, I think if both of them are at absolute peak, you want the one that's also connected to all the other tech that you use. I actually don't. I I like my car software being like separate from my phone. I think that's like a small wait. Same. No, I no. I think that's I like a small a personal thinking. thing where it's like. As I some, think in peak, if they were absolutely perfect on both sides, you would want it connected to everything else. I think that if it was skinned to feel native, and but it was actually CarPlayer Android Auto, then I would be okay with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I prefer like the Tesla UI or the Rivian UI to CarPlay and Android Auto. But I, I see what you're saying about yeah, yeah. If it that's was what better. I'm saying. Like if <laughs> yeah. it was if perfect it was in both scenarios, you would want it. I would want the one that's connected, yeah, connected to, to everything right. else. Yeah, because we all, all sure. we all want something in yeah. our ecosystem. It's because it's what you're the most familiar with too. It's already yeah. plugged into everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Summer, summary of everything for me <laughs> is the the legitimate older car companies have a head start in the making cars thing, and they're trying to figure out how to solve for all the downsides that they have with software. And this feels like a patch for now. Mm-hmm. The software companies have a huge head start when it comes to the software. Tesla, Rivian, maybe even Xiaomi, who knows? But they are trying to figure out all of the shortcomings that they have with the whole making cars thing. Batteries, range, build quality, panel gaps, whatever. Tonneau covers. Tonneau covers. <laughs> so they're they're both working on their shortcomings. And the patch for now seems like good car, good software combined. Please buy our car. That's my summary. Okay. We have to take a quick break. <laughs> yeah, sorry. About this for <laughs> like Mariah's been on the trivia button for like yeah. half an hour because our notes were like three sentences and then that was 30 minutes. Yeah. Hit right. the button. There it is. All right. All right, friends. I don't know if you're ready for this one. So this is a spen- special interest uh, topic. So RuneScape is a browser-based <laughs> oh, no. fantasy game. No, no, no. Hear me out. Originally released in 2001 by the company Jagex. With over 200 million registered accounts, it's the world's most popular free-to-play MMORPG. Still? To be determined. Oh, registered Uh, accounts. Yeah. RuneScape is known for many things, but especially their staggeringly large music library. In 2017, they were awarded with the Guinness World Record for most original pieces of music in a video game. Hmm. Huh. As of November 27th of 2023, how many total songs are there in RuneScape? It's a multiple choice answer. Don't be scared. Okay. Is that all of RuneScape? Oh, uh, like old school and RuneScape 3? Because are there different songs? I think it's just like in the newest version. So RuneScape 3. Yeah. Is RuneScape 3 considered the newest version anymore or is old school considered <laughs> None the of this newest is version? Help me you know, don't worry about it. I've never played RuneScape. <laughs> you don't need to play to know. I didn't even know this. Okay. So I still don't. Mariah famously has a RuneScape desk mat at her desk. So. Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, um, yeah. You swapped that. Yeah. You're wearing a RuneScape shirt, though. This is my Christmas gift. That's a RuneScape? Oh, actually, um, it's, it's based on one of the songs. It is. Oh, God. That's All right. Option A. Uh, 1,589 songs. I could see that. Option B, 1,362 songs. This is not a large variation. Also too many. <laughs> Option C, 1,027 songs. Or D, 856 songs. Those are all way too many. Songs. They're way too, those numbers are way too close to each other. Wow. <laughs> I feel like it's. I was random. thinking it would be like 64 songs. They're good <laughs> songs, by the songs. way. Yeah. A thousand songs. Yeah. 10,000 10, Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. Just saying, I don't know if it helps at all, but you can get something in the game called a music cape, correct? Or, yes. yeah, so if you unlock all of the songs, you get a piece of equipment based on unlocking all of the songs. It's all really you have to unlock the songs? You have RuneScape to to, is also yeah. famously known as the grindiest game possible. <clears throat> yeah. So. Okay. That shouldn't All right. Weird. Don't well, be scared. We'll think about Let's it. Let's take it to break. We'll think about it. We'll be back. I just want to hope somebody's listening right now like, you idiots, of course it's 1,130. <laughs> Famously. <laughs> 
Welcome back. Uh, this is a section that I think maybe we should have done uh, at the end of last year, but I wanted to fit in here because it's a little fun section and we always get a very positive audience reaction when we do, when we do something like this. Never too late. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to go over our individual favorite pieces of tech from 2023, something that we started using in 2023 that we think like kind of changed our workflow or that we just really positively liked. Um, it's always a little fun. I, I like recommendations sections. Mm -hmm. uh, Gadget Lab from Wired actually did a full recommendation episode for oh, the last cool. week of 2023. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to have a little recommendation section. So I think we're going to do three products each, and we're going to go in a little round table. So we're going to start off with Marquez. And uh, it doesn't have to be something that released in 2023, but just something that you started using that you really like. Oh. I love how in this, for audio listeners randomly after an ad break <laughs> people hosts of this show will just be wearing smart glasses oh i didn't even realize <laughs> oh, marquez doesn't even wear normal sunglasses <laughs> except for these indoors all the time yeah uh spoiler sorry i'm picking i'm picking the ray-bans meta smart glasses as my first pick these things i mean i don't know i don't like you said i don't wear sunglasses that much but they surprise me at how like just overall as a package, they managed to fit a lot of fun, smart features in things that look like just regular sunglasses. And they actually get, David's wearing the clear, clear ones. ones. Yeah. So you could kind of just wear them and then are those the transitions, right, too, or no? Uh, yeah, I think they are So they turn into lenses. sunglasses, too. They're not full sunglasses. They're not, like, nearly like yours. But they tint, you know. Yeah. Like, Personally, so I think that wearing the sunglasses ones is probably a better option because if you wear clear glasses when you don't normally wear clear glasses, then, then it's kind of like, obvious. Then they're like, what are you wearing? They're like, what are you doing? But yeah. if I'm walking through the city, like, the, the POV videos that you can get of just, like, walking around or whatever activity you're doing are actually pretty solid from yeah. these. Yeah. So just for that feature alone, I thought these are really cool. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to do more POV driving videos for autofocus and struggling to find safe ways to do that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. this is a, this has been a, an actual workflow game changer for that too. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm liking these. The video quality is really good. The sound good. quality is surprisingly good. It kind of shoots sound into your ears, yeah. directional audio. Yeah. And then they have, they're like one of the first multimodal AI products as well. Exactly. I've so. been, I've been testing the, Hey, Meta, look and tell me what you see. It's yeah. going to start reading to me now. We did this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Do you want me to? Oh, it didn't do it? Oh. It, oh, it, it didn't had, do it that time. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> We're in the early stages. Good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is my favorite piece. Watch it not work. Watch it not work. <laughs> All right, Andrew. My turn? All right. Yeah. yeah. I have for show and tell today. Oh. Oh. If you couldn't guess, because I won't stop talking about keyboards in the last couple of months. This you is type, bro? the OmniType Bauer Lite, wow. which is a keyboard from a company named OmniType. They're famous for a very old or an older, very expensive, very low inventory keyboard called the Bauer 2. Um, but they made a light version, which is polycarbonate. It's 100 bucks, 120 bucks. <laughs> And it's like in stock inventory, which is really cool and really a newer thing in the keyboard community that's happening right now. Um, and they were nice enough to send me one. And when I was on paternity yeah. leave, I built them. And now I've built like 10 keyboards and I've been having so much fun with it. Um, this one I brought specifically is, Light. I think, sounds and feels so Ooh. Good. Ooh. Um, Sounds good. I'm like obsessed with it. It is, um, yeah, it's a polycarbonate board. It's hot swap. I have switches from Kinetic Labs. They're called the Kinetic Lab Moon Switches, which are actually hand lubed from the factory so they sound really nice without any effort um and a nice game boy theme keycap set called gmk dmg I'm gonna do a little typing test yeah Ooh. i could listen to that all day oh, inject yeah. that in my brain i have dove head first into the keyboard hobby yeah. to the yeah. point where before i left for paternity leave i had built my first keyboard to now I am back from it and I have like 20 of them and a keyboard YouTube channel. So this is where we've gone. I have a question. Yeah. So I, I love all these, these like niche, like super deep dive into hobbies that we do. And I mm -hmm. always, I, I, I've started getting to keyboards more. And so I've come to appreciate much more the different sounds and feels that you yeah. get from a keyboard. Why does the lightness of it matter? The light of, the of how light this itself. is. Yeah, this is just light because polycarbonate's cheaper than CNC aluminum. Yeah. So the reason I'm actually working on a video right now on this for the studio channel, but the reason 
you can just stamp and mold polycarbonate. Whereas before the Bauer two that they were making, he said it took like over heavy. Yeah, because it's aluminum, yeah. but it took more than a year to make 500 of them and 8,000 people signed up for the <sighs> raffle. So that's just not an option for smaller companies or even some bigger companies to make yeah. stuff like that. Um, places like Keychron do do aluminum bodies and they're great at in-stock stuff. And there's way more companies doing in-stock things right now, which is really cool. Um, hmm. All of this I'm working on in the video that I'm doing right now, but polycarbonate is nice. I like the lightness of this just for like bringing it to work was nice. I think I do still like my heavy keyboard playing games because it like sits in its spot. Do you bring this back and forth every day? Not every day. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll probably leave this one at work. I built a bunch at home. I'll probably leave them at work to just <laughs> use this props because I obviously okay. don't need yeah. 20 keyboards. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've just been building a lot of different ones, trying different sounds and feels and stuff. And I've been taking videos of all of them and wanna, posting typing tests wanna on plug the channel. Your, plug your channel. Yeah. I want you guys, what do you think of this channel name? It's called L-M-N-O Key. I love it. That's nice, it's right? It's really good. That's a cool good. channel. It's name. a really alphabet good pun. Channel. It's just me and my friend typing pretty much. I love it. Very nice. low key, but yeah, this I, one, OmniType Bauer Light, big fan. I liked the keyboard Yule log. I made a keyboard Yule log. It's an hour of typing with like fireplace crackling. Did you noises. type for an hour or did you loop it? <laughs> did you type for an hour? <laughs> I, 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 t I typed for ten minutes and then looped it. Nice. I debated typing Christmas songs during it, but yeah. that was too much work. Yeah, that reminds. I used to bring my ha uh, when I worked at Intel. I brought my Happy Hacking keyboard to work every day. You had a key, a carrying case. I, I, I had a carrying <laughs> case for it. Uh, nice. There was a period of time as well that I brought my Ergodox to work. Yeah. And I used to eat ramen Sorry. at my desk while typing. An Ergodox is like a split hand keyboard oh. where you do this and then you yeah. can put something in the center. Split keyboards look really That's cool. That's a I don't like take to video. Make one of someone clipped that. I just went like this. Yeah. <laughs> I, had a, I had a wood case and <clears throat> elven, elven keycaps nice. from Lord of the Rings. Wow. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. And a RuneScape mouse pad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, my, I think, favorite piece of tech from this year is software. It's very, we've talked about this before. It's Arc Browser. Uh, they're a cool startup. You have that, to pull it out of your computer to show it to us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got a sticker on my laptop. Oh, okay. They're a, they're a very fun startup. They're, uh, I don't really know how they're gonna make money, uh, and they don't really either. They have some random ideas, but for now they're running on some runway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't, it's, it's hard to get me to switch a piece of software or technology that I use all the time, and I, I generally will try things for like a day and then I'll be like, mm, no, I like going back to my other thing. Um, I think I described Arc very badly the last time we talked about it. I was like, it kind of gets rid of your tabs and then it can kind of do this stuff. And uh, it cleans your room for you. Yeah, I kind of, yeah, yeah. I, I famously am really, really terrible at tab management. So at a certain amount of time, uh, at, like 12 hours later, it will clear all your tabs and you can have different spaces. So I have like a workspace, a personal space, um, and then like a website management space, just all these different things. It's got boosts now that came out this year, which is like you can basically modify the code for a website to look however you want. Hmm. You can turn it pink. You can get rid of certain things. They had this funny little uh, ad that came out when Twitter when Twitter blue came out that like removed the Twitter blue tab right. and removed all these things oh, yeah. just to like clean up. I don't know. It's just a, it's a very fun, uh, startup with a very fun browser. Since and most browsers are so stagnant. They're just, it's Apple's browser, Microsoft's browser, or Google's browser. Yeah. So it's like, they're not playing with fun, quirky, interesting user. features. Yeah. They're quirky. I think that's Would you what... say Firefox is? No, 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 no. Oh. I'm just sad you didn't say it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> no, I would say though it is stagnant, but, to David's like point here is it's really hard to change things that you use for a very long time and a browser like I'm using Firefox because I yeah. started years ago and I don't know why I use it over Chrome. I'm just used to seeing yeah. it like that anyways and I just haven't made the change. So like yeah. that's a big change. So you, it's got to be a fairly solid product if you've made that change. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. My, there is a small list of software that if I change it, which I do once in a while, it's a really big deal yeah. to me, which is my to-do list app, my email app, my calendar app, yeah. my video editing app, yeah. and my browser. Right. They're like, I'll have one for years at a time, and if I find one, I might try it for a day and then come back to the one I like, and find another one, try it for a day, come back to the one I like. Yeah. But if I change from Premiere to Final Cut, my life has changed. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. If I change from Safari to Arc, like, which I did, 
huge change. Yeah. So I, I, I like it a lot. Also, ARC is doing something kind of crazy and unprecedented where they're uh, unprecedented. I like presidented. Unprecedented. <laughs> <laughs> they're basically, tr they're doing something called uh, Swift on Windows, which effectively they didn't want to write a whole code base. Right now it's only Mac OS, and so they wrote it for Swift because Swift is like a much newer, cleaner thing, and they didn't want to use um, some of these like platform switcher applications. Mm. So they're making this thing called Swift on Windows where basically they can just write it for Swift and then theoretically can make it run on Windows. They can make it run on Android. Um, and they have an iPhone app right now, but they're going to completely revamp it because it's not really a browser app. It's sort of just like a, you can only have one tab open at a time yeah. and you can pin things to your, to your browser on your laptop. But it's a very big undertaking. I think because they made a browser and they don't see a really obvious path to monetization, they're trying to figure out how they could monetize this. Um, but they're, qu they're quirky and fun. And that's just kind of the reason that I kind of have stuck with them from, uh, since the beginning of the year. Nice. But we'll see if they're around. They make nice year, hats, too. Just saying. They do make nice hats. Oh, that's how they can make money. They dig their hat, yeah. On the hats, yeah. <laughs> Merch, baby. They have a pretty rabid uh, fan base that is like... It's always a good thing. Yeah. Loyalty is nice. Very loyal fan base. And surprisingly, they, uh, like, every week, they update the app on Thursday of every week and add a fee pretty much add a feature every week, which is cool. They now have it on their YouTube channel. They put out like feature update videos every week and those videos get close to 100,000 views every week now. That's where you make YouTube YouTuber. creators now. <laughs> AdSense, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're YouTubers now. AdSense. Nice. Um, so yeah, it was it was fun using that this year. Yeah. Nice. All right. Product All right. number two, Marquez. My next one is like extremely expensive. So That's hopefully fine. you guys have less expensive things. <laughs> uh, let's put the affiliate code in there. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Rivian R1S. That is expensive. It's a it's <laughs> my it's the most well-rounded, most I, I had almost only good things to say about this EV, which is very rare for me. And I mean, I, we test all kinds of vehicles, cars, SUVs, pickup trucks, all sorts of stuff like that. I had like nothing negative to say about the Rivian R1S. And it, my first exposure to it was, I think, in 2022, but it started shipping in 2023 and I reviewed it in 2023. And um, yeah, there's a lot of things that I like about it. So I'm there's also an Easter egg in the video that I made about it, which you guys will probably understand sometime later in 2024. But uh yeah, Wait, what? that's really vague. Well, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Or I don't think I know what mm. you're talking about. So yeah, that I mean it's expensive. It's yeah. it's I'm starting to see a lot more of them on the road, which I think is a good sign for Rivian as a company. I, I think see them it's, everywhere. It's selling way better than the truck. Yeah. So that's cool. But yeah, I just I'm shouting it out because I think it's amazing. I think R2S and R2T will be much more interesting for the masses because they're trying to bring most of the capabilities that most people need on the street down in price to an attainable level I, want it, and want it so I think bad. they're gonna be great what if i want a sedan can rivian make a sedan a sedan so rivian has this adventure type of theme make an I adventure would say. sedan i think an adventure <laughs> sedan cross, would be interesting a, like a cross track yeah i think yes. that's a that's a popular yeah. vehicle category yeah. so the, the pickup truck technically the most popular vehicle in america is yeah. a pickup truck and they started right. with a competitor to it and i think the the big three row sedan is another very popular category that maybe an adventure three row SUV. spin sorry three three row suv but I think this, the big crossover or sedan, crossover. big sedan, could be another thing for them to aim if they, for. Because because the Subaru Solterra was so bad, <laughs> if, if they made like a Solterra competitor that was actually good, I would be so happy. I, I want the I would R, buy that in a heartbeat. I want the R two so bad, slightly bigger, similar size to my Forester. If that's the case, yeah, I'd be very R two very is. happy. Yeah. Again, I think I I put my demands out there. That might be I'll two be, row. What? Because R1S is a small three row, maybe R2S is two. Yeah, row. Yeah, R2S I would assume is going to be a two row, but still decent trunk space. Yeah. yeah. If it's still got like the cool boxy look of Rivian, and it yeah. still has like some of the cool like a, a front trunk. Because a lot of times I feel like when you start going to the smaller SUV, they start getting rid of the front trunk. Yeah. I still want Rivian, it. I think is uniquely building EV from the ground up, where some of the ones I get rid of the front trunk are just not. They're just late. They're not yeah. building an EV from the ground up in that way. Yeah. I have a. I feel like I'm going to reserve the R R2 yeah. S. As long as you're like not ha planning on having three more kids, then you could they get can that They can find car. their own car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of them can go in the front track. <laughs> then you're getting that white Chevy minivan, baby. <laughs> yeah. It's on. Yeah. Honda Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, uh, R1S. That's my shout out. That's mm. awesome. 
Um, I'm going to shout out something. So I don't use it, but we have it in the office. And I think it's really, really cool. And unless you see it, so I'll try and describe it. It sounds kind of lame, but I think it's awesome. It's the Corsair Platform 6 sit-stand desk that we got recently. Oh, that's I like pretty that damn cool. I thought about... I uh, thought a lot about getting one. Yeah. I really like it. So they mm. they sent us one and we put it in our gaming room. Yeah. And it's like a Corsair is obviously a gaming company. This desk doesn't scream gamer as hard no. though. It's like a nice wooden platform. It has kind of like its own adjustable pegboard backing. So it's you can super cool. add all these different customized like shelves and hooks and like there's side plates that come out to extend the desk left and right. There's pegboards that can go on the side. It's autumn, it's sit stand. It just has like all these really awesome customizing things on it without looking without like looking like a real desk. Because here's the thing, I could see having this in a garage this and could, using it as like a workshop desk. It probably workshop desk probably should be a little sturdier or like thicker just if you're like using a saw and stuff and yeah, yeah. inside of it I but mean like, like soldering and that kind of stuff yeah yeah fair I mean this is this is it's just a really nice looking desk that has all the customized customization that you would like ever want like we have really nice speakers up on the side of That's it and everything That's what sold me my, yeah. right now my studio monitors are on the desk and they they've been on my desk for years but the the thought of being able to get them up off the desk at your ear level but then have re reclaim the desk space yeah. underneath it that that's sick. and still has nice. all sorts of great things for like cable management and stuff like that and places yeah. for arms like essentially you can create this with like almost nothing sitting on the desk except for what you want and have your monitor and computer set up in all different places and i don't it's just a really it's sick cool. desk i don't even know how much it is it's probably pretty expensive yeah. but it's on sale it's on sale baby on sale. for how, how much? much uh it's only 30 dollars off but it is <laughs> oh no uh it's 848 dollars as of right now that's not that bad for a desk uh, for a motorized sit stand desk that's actually there's good. obviously better or cheaper options out there, yeah. but I don't think that's terrible. Yeah. yeah I spent a lot on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> that's but yeah, good. I think it's really sick. Cool. I think, I don't know if we've done, have we done an A-roll set in the gaming room since we changed that? No, I will Alex though. did one. Alex might have shopped for a video that's not out yet, but yeah. Yeah. I think it looks great and it's going to be a really good, yeah, just for our set purposes, mm -hmm. being able I to like customize it. It's and the really pegboard. nice. The pegboard's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Job. I like that yeah. a lot. Good job, Corsair. All yeah. right. My second one uh, is, I promise, not sponsored. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the Eight Sleep mattress topper pad. <sighs> Interesting. Go yeah. on. Okay. This thing is so sick. I love yeah. mine yeah. so much. We yeah. got, like, yeah, we got it originally for a sponsorship. Yep. Um, and well, they basically, they they reached out. They wanted to sponsor us. I said, I will have to try it first. And if I like it, then we'll do a sponsor. And yeah. then I loved it. Yeah. And then the sponsor. Yeah. Right. So yeah. they have a full mattress option, and then they just have a mattress topper. I got the topper because I already have a mattress that I really like. Um, but effectively, it's this high-tech sleep mattress topper that can cool you and heat you at different times of the night. It uses, like intelligent machine learning or whatever to like change the temperature over the course of the night so that you sleep better it has all these trackers to like tell you how you slept and like say when you should go to bed the yeah. app is weirdly well designed it it's is pretty, pretty good. good yeah yeah like it's it's a very high quality product with a very high quality app and honestly it it has made me sleep significantly better since I've had it. Yeah. Um, it's crazy too because at the at every morning it gives you this sleep score to tell you how well you slept. Yeah. What is and this? my sleep score always correlates with how good I feel, which is crazy. Like if it's it's like, oh, you slept terribly, you got a 63. I'm like, yeah, I know. I feel like crap. <laughs> but if I'm like, if I wake yeah. up and I'm like, wow, I feel incredible, it's always like 98. Um, and it'll change the temperature over the court, like as it gets closer to you waking up to help you wake up more naturally mm -hmm. and at a point in your like circadian rhythm where it's, you feel better waking up. I mean, up. just waking up to it being like a little warmer is, is nice yeah. or getting into bed with it being like getting a touch board or, or, or cooler depending on the, yeah. yeah. And it can also vibrate to wake you up, which is kind of weird. I don't yeah. use that it's feature. It's pretty low. They just updated I, it. Did they? Okay. Yeah. I haven't tried it again since then. Yeah. Yep. I have one major gripe with it, which mm -hmm. I is very small, and I don't know how they would change it. So if you want to like go take a nap in your bed in the middle of the day, and it's oh. cold in your room because there's water flowing through it without it changing the temperature, like the bed is cold when you get into mm -hmm. it, yeah. which is like so small. 
and I'm more of it a couch does. napper, but like, so you'd have to if heat you, it up ahead of time. Well, because it it starts heating up based on oh, like yeah, you, when you set as a bedtime. Oh yeah. right. Well, no, no, but like if you're if you would prefer to be a little warmer. Oh, then you can and, go on the app. And yeah, it. yeah, but if you're just like, oh man, I'm pretty exhausted at two o'clock. I'm gonna go take a nap in bed. It's just like cold because yes. it's just water that's sitting yeah. in a cold room. Yeah. So very minor gripe. Yeah. Still absolutely love it. Yeah. Two things. One, it's hilarious that my bed got a software update. But two, <laughs> <laughs> two is I think I got home from like an overnight thing once. And so I like got in bed to go to sleep at 6 a.m. or something. And it, would, it just turned on. It just figured it out, realized that I was, and I still got a horrible sleep score, but like <laughs> it realized that I was getting into bed at a crazy time. And I was like, all right, because it's got the sensors, the heart rate monitor, everything mm -hmm. is built into the mattress topper it's it knows a weird amount about you yeah it's kind maybe of maybe a little too much about yeah. You. yeah yeah it um, is also on sale <laughs> what <laughs> not a sponsor it is a very expensive product it's, it's very twenty five hundred dollars yeah. for the mattress topper which i know is a ton um and some of those features are behind a paywall yeah, behind as well. a subscription mm -hmm. you don't need the subscription right you really don't need it no i think some of the way i think they'll like it changing because like you can set what points of temperature you want over it's like when you go to bed when you hit light sleep when you hit deep sleep when you wake up but i think the automatic changing of that based on your movement and stuff is behind the paywall oh, is it yeah interesting it's like autopilot yeah. okay um well yeah yeah i really like it i have slept way better in the last six months since Plus you have a water cooled bed have yeah. you gotten to the point where it's harder to sleep in other beds um it mm, that's an interesting question. Because I wasn't sure if I was actually sleeping better in the eight sleep. I thought, wow, I do. Th I feel like I am going to sleep faster. And then I tried to sleep in a hotel bed, and I was like, I'm cooking. Okay, right hotel beds suck. Well, I, oh, man, I disagree with both. Of you. I've <laughs> really enjoyed. I think hotel beds are usually pretty good, and at least for me. And I, I've started feeling like, wow, these are too hot now. Interesting. I see. The reason I still sleep okay in a hotel bed is because I'm not paying the electricity bill of what I set the HVAC to down. when I go mm -hmm. into a hotel. That's very room. dad of you, Andrew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so I'm cranking that to whatever preferred but then temperature in the morning, I want. It's still 64 degrees, and you have to like get out of bed when it's cold. Yeah, which is tough. I like the feature where. Uh, it had hit zero cooling or heating like an hour before I wake up. But as I'm waking up, it gets colder and it sort of nudges me out of bed by getting colder. Hmm. And that works really well. See, that's so. probably why my sleep score sucks because I make it get warmer and then I'm like, I don't want to leave. I have never once wanted my bed to be warm. So I have never, I don't have yeah. it get warm ever. I'm a cozy boy, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Very cool product. Last round. Let's do a speed round. Okay. Last, last item for me. Um, I recently started using this set of in-ear monitors by 64 Audio. I don't know how to pronounce the name, but I'm going to try, which might be a mistake. I think it's called the Volure. But they're IEMs. I, back in high school, I have this memory of every time during like homeroom and study hall, I, I just had my Zoom HD and my in-ear monitors and I would just zen out and not talk to anyone and just listen to music for hours. And that was that memory was like a core memory that was unlocked when I just went back to starting to use in-ear monitors again because mm. you start hearing things in the music that you didn't realize were there because you've only heard them on headphones or mm. you've only heard them on speakers. I've been listening to these. I've been editing with these a little bit. They're very w versatile, very expensive also, uh, but I'm giving them a shout out because I don't have anything bad to say about them yet. So I made it. the mistake of opening them and trying them and then <laughs> handing them to you and not Being trying like, them for longer because now they haven't left your desk since I gave them. They're going to be there for a while. <laughs> yeah, they're actually yeah. in his ears they're right in, now. Yeah. It's it's funny what you unlock when you find a new, better listening experience. I uh, I have this turntable that I've had for a long time, and I I have like five hundred records, but they're all at my mom's house because I was that weird kid in high school who was like super into records. Uh, but I finally like got a couple new records and put them on my turntable at home, and I'm like, damn, this sounds so good. Yeah, it sounds way better. So I am. Ex I want to. I want to try your IEM. I'm editing. I'm like hearing things I've never heard from the microphone before. <laughs> like there are there are cars outside in the parking lot that I see the levels on the mix pre are at zero. So I'm like, I think we can keep talking. Like I don't hear. I don't see it on the levels. You can hear it in the and IEMs. then I hear in the IEMs. I'm like, this is so much. So much, I hear everything. I oh, hear my. No. I hear the hairs growing out of my face. It's crazy. <laughs> anyway, okay. What's your pick? Um, this is definitely something that came out in 2022, and the thing I'm looking forward to got delayed till 2024. So 
<laughs> using it as a 2023 thing Average is maybe it. not the best, but um, the Pulsar X2 wireless gaming mouse I've used before. Wait, Polestar? Pulsar? Pulsar. P-U-L-S-A-R. Um, it's just a mouse that I loved. It was fantastic. I was using the Random Frank P version, but they do all these really good collabs and designs, and they're coming out with a Demon Slayer collab soon, which is an anime I started watching and I really like so far. So I can't wait till that comes out. It's going to be sick. Hmm. But yeah, that's my, my cool. quick hit. Nice. Um, mine is a little boring, but I really liked the Pixel Fold this year. I know it had a lot of problems. Uh, like the bezels are pretty big on the inside and Here the interior the screen haters. is not very good. Here they come. Oh, I don't care about tensor, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Um, but I just really liked the form factor because I was really hoping like the Oppo Find N and the Find N2 never got a US launch. And that's like a shorter, more pocketbook style foldable yeah. phone. And so if you Passport? live in... Yeah, passport style. I like the pocketbook style. Yeah. <laughs> so if you live in like the United States and you want a pocketbook style, passport style phone, it's kind of the only option. And the thing is, Pixel software for Android is by far my favorite Android software. And so having that along with all the Google smarts on a passport style phone allowed me to sort of ignore some of the, the issues with it. Also, we've talked about this before, probably the best phone to use closed. Um, and I like that mindset when it comes to folding phones mm -hmm. because the galaxy uh z fold has always been a phone that's been like oh we want you to use this open most of the time and they yeah. make it a little bit awkward to a little use uncomfortable because closed. it's so narrow yeah but this phone is like a really nice aspect ratio closed it's short and it's nice and i like it um i'm really hoping that the second generation is significantly better i doubt it will be Maybe the third generation will be. Uh, I just want a better interior screen, maybe some smaller bezels, and that's about it. I really like that phone. Shout out to the Pixel so, Fold. I'm looking forward to the Pixel Fold too. As yeah, well. yeah. Imagine, do you know how you said it's narrow and awkward to use on the front of the Z Fold? Yeah. Remember the Essential Phone 2 concept that was supposed to be that like skinny <laughs> the phone? The gem phone, yeah. 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 That I can, so many so. people were like excited for that. I think they were just excited because it was different. It's just weird and different. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But if you remember the original Samsung Galaxy Fold, it was super slim and narrow, and then it just had a small screen inside yeah. of the front. Yeah, it, it had the weirdest it was bezels weird. ever. Looking yeah. back, that was a very first gen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really first gen, the screen broke. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the interior screen broke. So. Tough. Um, yeah. Well, awesome. Right. Cool. Well, I think that's going to round it out for this episode. I think it's time for trivia to wrap it up. Trivia. Where I on it. Time for me to expose how little I know about scoring music for video games, I guess. I don't know anything about I feel like Ellis is going to be ups thing. upset that he's not here for this because CS1, I believe I, his I dad does sound stuff for World of Warcraft or did at one point. Oh. oh what hasn't his family done? Dangerous <laughs> exactly. close to this trivia question. Okay. All right. Ellis is like, Nicki Minaj is my neighbor. Which of these products is not a real product that I've received an email about? Option A, Flappy, the intelligent cat door flap. How much AI is involved in it? These are all AI related, <laughs> yes, unfortunately. Uh, option B, Willow, a smart outdoor swing set that generates electricity. Option C, Z, a medical delivery drone for hospitals. Gen Z. Gen Z. And Saber, a smart pepper spray device. <laughs> These all could be real, like honestly. No, they really all, all right, could can you, be real. Can you play the music? Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Is this the waiting music? I already saw that. I Marquez. actually think we're supposed to play the music while you're asking the question, right? Uh, technically, I think it's supposed to be like the Jeopardy, this is how much time you have to uh, answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's broken, sorry. Because this doesn't seem like the right music, but this is what... No, this, this is, is the, the right music. music. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys said that the same Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Oh, I missed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Flip him and read, boys. All right, David. Oh, we, all, we all picked the same. Oh, you I all picked, picked the same one? We all picked B, the swing set. All right. You are yeah! correct. Uh, would you like to read what Ellis wrote about for the swing set? Yes. Oh. Um, Ellis did a collab on this one. Um <laughs> Willow is a revolutionary alternative energy solution intended for families with children, comprising of both 
photonic and electromechanical transductors, Willow focuses on two energy sources, the sun via solar panels and the near unlimited energy of a child uh, <laughs> via a series of passive components aimed at turning a child's mm. kinetic energy into useful energy. So that's too good for CES. Yeah. yeah. That, that's why that's too smart. Ellis Somebody really this. needs to be a PR person. <laughs> he can really spin this stuff. That's uh, hilarious. The reason I picked that was because I was like, there's no way that a child is going to be able to create enough energy on a play set that is going to be useful to your home in any way. Which is yeah. why it's realistic. But what if the electricity <laughs> is just like to power some outdoor lights that are on the swing set for your yard? Have no you one met said a child? <laughs> they have energy. Yeah. I had heard of the smart pepper spray computers. already. Yeah. Which, Me too. Uh, I, I got that email get... for that. Yeah. yeah. I think I saw it you on it? like a Verge yeah. article. What's smart about it? I don't know. Um, it, it says knows if it's, how many times it's it has been Bluetooth and it connects <laughs> to a safety app. So I guess every time. Oh, it so it alerts oh. someone when you're spraying someone. Okay. With yeah. It. So it has like a map and then it sends the location whenever it's deployed. That's actually that's, that's actually really smart. smart. That's yeah. Actually also, great, the great smart cat door sounds like a very good idea. That sounds handy. Yeah. 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 What is yeah. so smart about that? It also has an app. I'm hoping that it can tell when it's been used, so you can maybe say like, "Oh, I haven't seen my cat in a while. When did it go outside?" But also, I'm hoping. When it comes inside, maybe at night, it can then lock it. It so does. The, yeah. Mm. So oh, the cat's really? not going so out at night. It mm. not only detects when a cat tries to bring in prey into your home. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know so how that works. I have no idea. Uh, Leave that bird outside. Yeah. And then camera. it'll lock the flap also. Um, it has a prey detection camera and an app experience. Definitely a camera. It's just a visual AI going, I see something, not your cat. That's I'm awesome. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. I think that's cool. We all got points for that. Yeah. Cool. That's right. pretty sick. What does that bring the time, time for us to get it? Oh, yeah. That is a good question, isn't it? <laughs> uh, let's see. How many songs? I'm just going to guess. But they were so close to each other. I That's why I have to guess. Yeah, we just have to guess. All right. I have no idea either. Yeah. What if we all get it right again? So since winners. you all got it right, it looks like Marquez is at 20 points. Nice. Andrew's at 14. Nice. Carry the... <laughs> one, do the whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I thought it was good. David is also tied at 20 points. Perfect. All right. 2020. RuneScape, baby. RuneScape was awarded the Guinness Book of World Records for most original pieces of music in a video game in 2017. As of November of 2023, how many total songs are there in RuneScape? And option A is 100. Sorry. Option A is 1,589 songs. Option B is 1,362 songs. Option C is 1,027 songs. And option D is 856 songs. If you need me to read that again, I can read it again. Man, that's difficult. They're also close. All of them seem absurd to me. So It's too many either way. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> <sighs> I would just want to get this right it's gonna... because it's RuneScape. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Smile and wave. I wrote C. Did you all write the same thing? No. Okay. I also wrote C. You said C, David? Yeah. Incorrect. Uh, mm -hmm. What'd you write, Marquez? I wrote A. A One. is also incorrect. Is it D? Option B. Oh, is it B? 1,362 oh, songs. I originally wrote B, but I was like, the last question was B. Do I get an extra point if this is what the music cape oh, looks like? Man. I actually don't think you're far off with that. I think I'm pretty close, right? It's like a harp. <laughs> nice. Hey. Wait, that's Fake not, point. No. no you point. guys didn't What know. did you write, Marquez? I wrote 1,589, which was oh, the first one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Dude, they're banger songs too. Just saying. That's too many songs. They're good. Yeah, too I many. Really, yeah. You didn't have to go that hard. The Sims <laughs> has like 60, and that's way too many. <laughs> Wait, I recently saw a video of Katy Perry recording her song for The Sims, oh, and she had to do it Simlish? in Simlish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's nice. very funny. Would you guys like a bonus question for no there, points, yeah. or we can do it for points? I would like no a points. no points bonus. No question. points. Okay. Yeah. This is a. Uh, an obsession for this week. This question is about crayfish. I love okay. crawfish. I love crawfish. See, exactly. So, oh, no. crayfish, crawdads, mug bu mud bugs, ditch <laughs> bugs, freshwater lobsters, mountain lobsters, and yabbies are all the name for the same creature. 
Um, these little crustaceans, who are close relative of the main lobster, can be found all across the U.S. and have dozens of regional nicknames. <laughs> Crawfish can live on every continent in the world, except for which two? Crawfish, every continent in the world. I don't the think I can name all of the continents. <laughs> There's less than ten, right? There's seven. Seven. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> This is tough. Yeah. Because I'm going by... Mm. Mm. That is tough. No, I'm going I'm going with that. But I'm going to be mad because I changed my answer halfway. All right. I wrote Antarctica. Uh, assuming we all wrote that, right? I did. And Australia. You are half right. <laughs> oh. I, uh, yeah. And okay. then what did you have? All, I wrote Antarctica and Asia. Oh, 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 damn. You're close, you're close. <laughs> I wrote Antarctica, and then I wrote Australia, then crossed out and wrote Asia. <laughs> Marquez is just a hybrid of me and Andrew. You is guys, this South America? You're half right. You're all half right. Uh, the two places that you won't find crawfish are, according to welovecrawfish.com, uh, Africa and Antarctica. Uh, I was Africa. thinking Africa, maybe. Oh, hmm. Would wow. you like a fun fact about crawfish? Sure. That wasn't Why the fun did you bring fact? Up cra- I have a fun Let's... fact about crawfish. I can eat 60 in a day. <laughs> Did you do that? Yeah. Wait, have you ever... Wait, sorry, before the... Fun, have you ever heard the uh, Parks and Rec joke where he's like, I think I'm allergic to sushi. Uh, Anytime I eat 80 sushis, I throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard that. <laughs> Wait, so when did you eat 60 crawfish? Uh, a couple years ago, my neighbor had a party where they imported a ton of them directly from Louisiana and had a backyard barbecue crawfish party basically and just had them all stacked on a table and I just sat at the table and ate them the entire party <laughs> and they were oh amazing God. <laughs> I also watched him boil them alive individually have you great. guys gotten the tiktoker who does the crawfish boils I have no. seen him. he's yeah. been going for years Mariah why did you bring that why, why did you introduce that question there was a video I don't know if it was a Bon Appetit video or like some Con- Condé Nast video it was uh interviewing people from every state and asking them what they call a crawfish. Um, oh. Crawdaddy, probably. Huh. Crawfish. I was just in New Orleans over Christmas break um, for no reason. and You mean Nolans? Nala. Yeah, I, I never knew that people called it Nola. Nola. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there was a band there that I saw called Crawdaddy Problems. Hey. They were really good. Nice. And uh, Or Crawdaddy Issues, one of the two. Probably crawdad crawdad issues. Issues. Those are good. It's a funny name. But also, I forgot about the whole crawdad thing, and it was everywhere. So, yeah, so you couldn't forget. True. <laughs> Amazing. All right. <laughs> All right. So, crawfish fact. Yeah. Uh, they can shed slash molt their shells up to fifteen times within their lifetime, and each time they shed their shell, they double in size. Oh. Oh my god. I'm glad they can only do it fifteen times. That's a lot Wait, of doubles. That's exponential growth. They that's double incredible. in size. <laughs> The difference between us a level twelve and <laughs> two a level to the 15. fifteen yeah. is crazy. Wait, what's two to the fifteenth? Do you know this off the top of your head? Ask the radio. Okay, two, four, eight, sixteen. No, I got this. Thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six, five twelve, ten twenty-four, twenty forty-eight, forty ninety-six, eight thousand one hundred eighty-three, sixteen thousand three hundred sixty-six, sixteen thousand three hundred sixty-six. <laughs> Thirty-two thousand seven hundred and twenty-two. How do you do power? No idea. Sixty-four thousand, sixty-five thousand, one hundred. Oh, there we go. Four hundred, sixty-five thousand four hundred and sixty-four. What was the number you said before that? Oh, it's thirty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-eight. Oh, I went too far. Which means these crawdads. By the end of their life, can be thirty-two thousand six hundred and seventy-eight. Seven hundred and sixty. Wait, is it double in size of the of the size of the of animal. the original size or of the new size of the new size? I think it's each time they just double. They in just size. double, double, double. How does double, anything double. get thirty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-eight times? They're probably born like that big. Maybe microscopic. They've got to be. But even if, be... even if it was a once a single cell organism, and then by the end of its life, it had thirty two thousand seven hundred sixty eight cells. That makes sense. Have if you ever... it's one centimeter across when it's molts for the first time, then it's thirty two thousand thirty two no meters across. <laughs> <laughs> you 
huge. <laughs> it can't be. It's got to be tiny. Whatever. Thirty-three meter crawdad. That'd be it molds. incredible. Have you ever heard of dragon's breath candy? No. This is a TikTok that I saw recently, no, no. but they say it, it expands a million times because it's a you turn it into a loop and then you cross it over and then oh, pull it again. Yeah, yeah. But uh -oh. like a million sounds absurd, but it's really only probably like 20 times pulling it because it uh, is doubling yeah. and every time. And it looks time. like straight. And it winds up looking like hair yeah, at the it's end. So fine. But it's like a taffy almost. Yeah. Interesting. My yeah. second tiny fact, not as exciting, is they walk <laughs> forwards, but they swim backwards. Oh. Yes. Walk forwards. That I did know. That's all I got. All right. Fun fact. I also walk forwards but swim backwards. That's it for this week on Waveform. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. We had, uh, of course, a lot to talk about. Hopefully everything we talk about is up to date. Crawfish. If it's not, you can expect us back next week with updates on all the stuff that's changed <laughs> since this time. Updates on our crawfish facts next week. It happens. Sometimes crawfish get updates between Wednesdays. So Just either like my way. mattress, the crawdates <laughs> are getting updates. Yeah. So get subscribed if you haven't already. Hit that like button. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you in the comment section. And until next week, catch you later. Peace. Waveform is produced by Adam Alina and Ellis Rovin. And this week... Big shout out to Mariah for stepping in and being our producer. Nice. Um, we are partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network and our intro outro music was created by me. So, 